Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and we're seeing a lot of churches in the attempt to lure the lost, leave out words like the cross and Calvary, blood and resurrection. I know this is going to upset some people, but please hear my heart. In the attempt of trying to win the lost and get the sinner through those doors this Sunday, there's a huge compromise going on in the church, and it's wrong. They call the cross and the word Calvary, and the words blood, resurrection, they're calling it Christian ease. Christian ease is straight from scripture. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. And notice, to those who perish, or to those who do not believe, it's foolishness. But to those who have experienced the salvation power, it's the power of God. Not the cross is the power of God, but the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Now, we don't worship the cross. We worship Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the cross. The preaching of the cross is the explanation and the expounding of what the cross means. And without a preacher, it's just the tree of death. It was a horrible place where thieves and murderers were sentenced to death. They were sentenced to die a horrific death. You see, the cross makes no sense without a preacher. The cross is condemnation. The cross is a penalty of sin that we cannot ever repay. The cross creates division. And you can talk about God and you can talk about faith and religion, but once you bring the cross into the subject or the blood of the lamb into the subject, you divide people right and left. And it's happening in the church. Without the cross, there is no remission of sin. There's no redemption for our sin. The cross is the message of grace. And the world hates the cross. But sinners look to the cross and they see forgiveness and mercy and they see grace. In Revelation 12, 11, it says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You see, Smith Wigglesworth and Billy Graham, they were both told in the beginning of their ministries not to preach the bloody gospel, not to preach the, the blood of the lamb. And if they did, that it wouldn't give them the pulpits that they desired. I personally know of pastors who have been told not to preach the cross, to take down the cross. These are nationally known ministers and authors who have advised other ministers to take it down. It says it makes them uncomfortable. Thank God both Billy Graham and Smith Wigglesworth didn't listen. And thank God for those ministers across this nation that have not compromised the preaching of the cross and the preaching of the blood of the Lamb. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Do we get to pick and choose from the word of God what we preached? We are commissioned to preach the good news, and that means the word of God in its entirety. Charles Spurgeon said in a message that he preached in 1888, by the blood of the lamb we understand our Lord's death as substitutionary sacrifice. Let us be very clear here. It is not said they overcame the arch enemy by the blood of Jesus or the blood of Christ, but by the blood of the lamb. And the words are expressly chosen because under the figure of the lamb, we have set before us a sacrifice. We must make it known that the chastisement of our peace was upon him and that the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. There's no overcoming sin without a substitutionary sacrifice. The lamb under the old law was brought by the offender to make atonement for his offense. In his place, it was slain. This was the type of Christ taking the sinner's place. 
and bearing the sinner's sin and suffering in the sinner's stead and vindicating us all. See, my dad heard a story from one of his friends. As a matter of fact, my notes today were taken from one of my dad's sermons. It was about a guy that worked in a slaughterhouse. He had told my dad something very interesting about the blood of the lamb. He said, we used to butcher everything. We butchered things from hogs to goats to sheep to cattle. And we butchered them all. And when we butchered them, the blood went into a common vat. All of it was like a big tank. But when we butchered a lamb, something unique would happen. As we put the lamb's blood into the common vat, into the tank. It wouldn't mix with the other bloods. It was like oil and water. It always rose to the surface. And we found that the lamb's blood would not mix <laughs> with any other blood. It would come to the top and be like a rolling marble, is what he said. That's when we realized that there was something very, very special about the blood of the lamb. See, I'm here today to declare to you that I don't care what that of hell has you in today. When the blood of the Lamb is applied, it is a way of drawing out all of the impurities and the sin of your life and bring you to the very top of everything in life. You see, this is the greatest illustration of the power of the blood I have ever heard. And it blew my mind when I found it, when I was researching for this. There is an animal that can repel a snake's venomous bite. Now you may be ahead of me right now, and guess what it is? It's a lamb. You see, the antidote for a poisonous venom comes from the blood of the lamb. Scientists put a lamb into a cage for an experiment. And they put it in there with a poisonous snake. And that snake came and bit that lamb. The lamb staggered. He stood though, he didn't fall. After a while, the snake came back and bit him for a second time. And the lamb staggered again. But nevertheless, that lamb still stood. And when that snake came for a third time, he was out of venom. And this time, the lamb didn't even stagger. Why? Because the lamb's blood turns the poison into a protein. There's an antidote for any snake bite from hell today. We used to sing that song, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You see, it's not my little matter. It is the blood of the Lamb that's going to matter. It is the blood of the Lamb that's going to get us out of great tribulation. Nothing can do it but the blood.
Thank you.